Hi, it's Terry Armenta from the Forensic Science Academy. I'm just here to give you an overview of what the Forensic Science Academy is all about. And uh, in this short video, maybe not too short, but it's about 20 minutes long, I just wanted to give you an overview of the Forensic Science Academy and what we're offering, our hands-on training, and why you need to get started training uh, for your forensic career. So uh, our next class is ready to start actually April. Uh, we're getting ready to get going there um, and the class is about uh, 20 we're gonna have 20 students maybe 25 I'm not too sure yet depends upon um, if there's anybody on the wait list from 2019 but let me just go over the uh, the Academy modules that we're offering for class 2020 fingerprint classification regiology photography which is probably my favorite basic crime scene, and of course, advanced crime scene, death investigation. And then, then along the way, uh, we are going to be having uh, two field trips, I'm sorry, three field trips, and I'll get into that in a little bit, uh, as well as some uh, special topics. And again, I will get into that. So you're kind of, you got to wait for the um, PowerPoint to end. But again, I'm not going to keep you in, in so much great uh, suspense, and I will just tell you as we go along. So our fingerprint classification patterns, you'll be introduced to the three basic types of fingerprint patterns, loops, arches, and whirls. Um, as, as a hands-on training program, we want to make sure that each student is trained accordingly and, and has reached the competencies of classifying and identifying fingerprints. Uh, we offer 32 hours of training for each of the fingerprint uh, modules. It's uh, classification 32 hours and identification 32 hours. Our forensic photography course, again, it's um, a 32 hour training module. One of the things about uh, the, phot the photography module is we have the nighttime photography class and we actually take you out to an area that is uh, challenging with light lighting situations. So you, the student, can figure out how to light up your mock crime scene with the light that you have or the light that's not available, such as um, headlights, street lights, things like that. Uh, one thing I did miss for the fingerprint um, classification and, and identification, our first field trip is usually in that module. Uh, each of the students will get to go to a tow yard and dust and lift for prints all day long. So why is that important? Because you want to be able to convey and during your oral interviews, uh, as well as your, your portfolio, that you've done X amount of prints. You've rolled prints, you've dusted and lifted prints, you've classified prints, you identified prints, all along because you want to show that you are competent and you have the skills in order to get the, um, the position that you're applying to. In our forensic photography module, we do ask that you bring or have available a digital camera because the point and shoot cameras or even the iPhone uh, uh, cameras, they just don't have the capability of what you need to do and what you need to learn how to manipulate uh, a digital a camera. Our mock crime scenes during our crime, basic crime scene as well as our advanced crime scene, again, it's here to teach you what you need to do with hands-on training. Um, we will cover scene walkthroughs, crime scene management, of course, evidence collection, documentation, um, we'll do a sketching and measuring. And it's all done when you're outside. Our marked crime scenes are both outside and inside. And I always like to say here in Southern California, because that's where the training takes place, I'm always hoping that it rains or there's some type of, it's hot or there's water involved because it really tests you as a student. You have to think what are you going to do or how you're going to preserve your crime scene, especially your evidence, um, because if water is coming about uh, and it's the sprinklers are going on and you have evidence everywhere, what are you gonna do? That's what we teach you. In the advanced crime scene investigation, it builds upon the uh, basic crime scene. It's, it's more involved, more evidence-based, uh, more documentation. We want to do this, why? Because you have to know the basics in order to uh, know what you're doing in advanced crime scene. Um, uh, you'll be paired up or in groups of, of uh, team members, and you're not allowed to ask us anything during the uh, mock crime scene um, 
scenes that you'll investigate in advanced crime scenes. Because again, we wanna make sure that you're competent um, in, in, in achieving the objectives for that particular training module. It is a lot of fun. So uh, in, in students, uh, they, they meet people that are obviously are strangers in the class and they come after six months knowing that every one of those students um, will support them when they're going for interviews, tips, things like that. So it becomes quite of a, a great working unit. Dusting and lifting for fingerprints. Again, we'll do that in the fingerprint uh, module because you'll go on your field trip uh, as well as during advanced crime scene. And um, during advanced crime scene, we will take the students to another field trip, the last field trip. Again, we have we offer three field trips uh, for class 2020. And that one is we take uh, the students to a training seminar. It's usually uh, located within Southern California. Uh, both the master instructor and myself belong to Southern California Association of Fingerprint Officers. So we take the entire class to a uh, training seminar. Um, and it just depends upon who is speaking, what the topic is. And we do that so you, the student, will get the feel of how to network with other professionals because you will be seeing these people during your what? Your, your interviews. Our last training module is death investigations. Our, our instructor for, is from LA County Corners and uh, she go, goes over the laws governing decedents, uh, evidence collection, and it's lots of scene viewing. Uh, we'll cover aspects of uh, blunt force trauma, suicide, homicide, things like that. Uh, and it's, it's, again, it's 32 hours for the training module as well. In addition, we do have some special topics such as courtroom testimony, uh, forensic entomology. We, that's the first time we're gonna have a 32 hour training module for that, as well as other special uh, guest speakers. We have a couple of people coming from uh, the FBI, a former uh, a police chief who's gonna cover serial uh, profiling or serial killers as well as mass shooting and the elements for that. Again, we are only going to accept 20 students for class 2020. Um, I'm going to put the links of where to register the, the application itself and the requirements, which you know what, I'll just cover uh, right now. Um, you need two letters of recommendation as well as the uh, $50 application fee, non-refundable. And then you schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me so we can determine um, if the academy is a good fit for you, if, if you're, you know, exactly what forensic discipline you want to get into, things like that. So it is, like I said, it is a lot of work. Um, it's a weekend only program. So it should not, hopefully it should not interfere too much with um, your personal life, if you're in your work life, as well as your um, if you're working from the home or school life, you know, some of you may still be in school achieving that. A lot of the questions I get asked is, you know, can we guarantee a job for you? And is there a job placement? And the answer is no. Uh, we can't guarantee that you'll get a forensic related position right away. It may take a year, it may take up to three years. It just depends upon what forensic discipline that you're aiming for. Uh, for example, if you're going for forensic pathology, of course you're not going to get a position right out of uh, completing the Forensic Science Academy because why? You need a medical degree as well as specialized training. Uh, for crime scene investigators, um, photographers, uh, medical legal investigators, it's the coroner investigator, uh, and also depending upon what your educational background is, as well as your prior experience, do you have investigative experience such as loss prevention, where you're a security guard, all that lends into um, your marketability for uh, open positions. I recommend that you start training in whatever capacity. If you can't come to the academy, we offer online classes as well as hybrid classes. We do have seminars and workshops. And even if you're not located in Southern California, there are other avenues for training. You can join a professional forensic organization such as SCAPO, again, that's uh, Southern California based, or the International Association for Identification. They accept students as well. You need to get relevant hands-on training in order to 
set yourself apart from others who are applying to that same position. It is quite challenging, I'm not going to lie, to get a forensic position these days, but it can be done. I've had the students uh, in the past, actually uh, two classes ago, it was in backgrounds even before he finished uh, the Forensic Science Academy and was ultimately hired. I've had other students who have gone on to a different form of forensics, uh, for instance, accounting, forensic nursing, things like that. So they took the Forensic Science Academy in order to understand the process of collection and documentation of scenes. I've had individuals who've come to the academy as a backup plan because their whole goal is to go into law enforcement. And then I've had other people who are in the professional field, such as law enforcement or private investigators that are trying to get into or lateral into a forensic related position. So depending upon where you wanna go, I believe we can help you at the Forensic Science Academy. So that's about it. Uh, again, I'm going to um, put in the links for the application and the, app, the registration fee itself. This is just what you're looking at, an example of one of our students uh, lifting a print. Uh, and we supply all the um, equipment and uh, accessories and, and tapes and fingerprint powder that you need in order to conduct and complete your particular scenes. Uh, this is one of the scenes from a few classes ago, all of our students uh, learning about photography and setting up. Again, we do have a lot of fun. It's not always just go, go, go. Uh, our master instructor, Sherry Ariana, um, instructing about uh, scene sketching, scene documentation. And yes, she will be doing that. Most of the times you're out of your seat, um, not just reading from the book or being assigned reading uh, material. Again, another student of ours uh, doing shoe impressions. And of course, uh, actually one of my favorite things is uh, we do cover uh, blood stain patterns as well as ballistics in the academy too. So whatever your specialty is, your forensic goal is, I am sure that the Forensic Science Academy can help you get trained in order for you to start a forensic related position. If you have any questions, again, that's my information. I'm at social media at Forensic187. We do have a Facebook group, uh, FTU187, but I will put all those links um, in the video as well. And if you have any questions, please just reach out to me. I am here to help you always. That's it. Thanks for viewing.